Today we are going to learn about proportional situations. A proportion are two equivalent ratios. And here are the steps for setting up a proportion. Step, uh, we set up the first ratio using the given information. So we find that information in our word problems. The second ratio, we use a variable. Variables are usually represented by the letter X. This is what you have to find. We make sure that we label each part of the proportion to make sure you have it set up correctly. So let's do some practice. Part one says to find a way to prove that these situations are equivalent, proportional. So proportional means equivalent. So this says Jada bought three hamburgers and two hot dogs, while Richard bought nine hamburgers and six hot dogs. So we're going to set up a ratio with just our labels. We have hamburgers. over hot dogs and Jada has three hamburgers over two hot dogs and Richard has nine hamburgers over six hot dogs so we want to see if these ratios are equivalent, if they're proportional. So we see that Jada's ratio is in simplest form. So we want to get Richard's ratio in simplest form, and we'll do that by dividing by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we see that both ratios are 3 over 2, so this is proportional. So we'll write that down and box it because that is our answer. Okay, number two says, do Christy and Nancy have equal sets of pots and pans? If Christy has 12 pots and 8 pans, and Nancy has 10 pots and 6 pans. So, the ratio using our labels is pots over pans. And Christy has 12 pots over eight pans and Nancy has ten pots over six pans. So we can see that both of these ratios are not in simplest form so we're going to simplify both of them. This Christie's ratio we can divide by four over four and that will give us 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then down here we can divide by 2, it looks like. And 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we see that we have 3 over 2 and 5 thirds. So this is not proportional or non-proportional. So we will write that down and box it because that is our answer. Okay, number three says, Farmer Jones has 16 cows and 12 chickens. Farmer Jack has 12 cows and 9 chickens. So again, we're going to see if both of these farmers' ratios are proportional. So we're setting up cows to chickens. And I would like you to finish this on your own. So press pause in a second. You will solve this, and then we will check this during our WISC chat tomorrow. Press play when you are finished. Okay, part two says the following ratios are equivalent. So we already know that they are equal, um, which is what we were trying to find in part one. We want to find the missing value. So that's where we're going to represent when using a variable of x. So let's practice. Number four says the ratio of ticks to fleas on Laura's dog, Ripley, is 20 to 60. How many fleas would you expect to find on her cat, Lily, if she had 40 ticks? So we're looking at ticks to fleas. 
And then Laura's dog, so we'll put an L, has um, 20 ticks and 60 fleas. And it's asking how many fleas, so we want to look at our ratio and say where are the fleas. The fleas are on the bottom, so on our next ratio, we have to put the variable x for fleas because this is what we're looking for and we don't know what it is. And then it says if she has 40 ticks, so where are the ticks? Ticks are on the top, so we're going to keep the 40 ticks on the top. So now we want to um, find x. So we look at our proportion. This is our proportion. We have two ratios on our paper. And we say, how do we get 20 to 40? We have 20 ticks, and we know that the cat has 40 ticks. We can get 20 to 40 by multiplying by 2. And what we do on the top, we have to do on the bottom. So by multiplying 60 times 2, that's going to give us how many fleas the cat has. So 60 times 2 is 120. So then after that, we will write x equals 120 fleas because that is our final answer that we were trying to solve. We also want to box it so we can find it in all of our work. Okay, number five says that there were, there were five pair of smelly gym socks to eight pairs of gym shoes. How many smelly socks would you expect to find for 24 pair of gym shoes? Okay, so let's look at our information. We know that we're comparing socks to shoes. So we're going to write that ratio down. And then it tells us we're going to pull our first ratio from the given information. So there were five pair of socks to eight pair of shoes. That's our first ratio. We put an equal sign because we know that they're equivalent. Our second ratio, we find what they gave us. They're always going to give us one part of that ratio. And they gave us that there are 24 pairs of shoes. So I'm going to look at my labeled ratio and say, where are shoes? Shoes are on the bottom. So I'm going to place this 24 shoes on the bottom of my second ratio. And then on the top, that's where socks belong. But I don't know socks. I'm finding how many socks there were. So I'm going to put an X and then label it socks. So I can solve for that x. So now I look at the, the part of my ratio where I have both numbers. And that's for shoes. That's on the bottom. So I say, how can I get 8 to 24? Well, 8 times 3 is 24. So I just have to multiply it by 3. And remember what we do on the bottom? We do on the top. So in order to find x socks, I have to multiply 5 times 3, which gives me 15. Therefore, x socks equals 15 socks, or pairs of socks. Remember to box your answer, and that is our final answer. Okay, let's look at our final problem. Cheryl shed 32 tears when she cut two onions. How many tears would she shed if she cut six onions? So it looks like my labeled proportion is going to be tears to onions. So now I'm going to find my first ratio by the given information. So it looks like 32 tears over two onions. Remember, I put an equal sign because it, our part B or part two told us that they're already equivalent, so we know that they are equal. And then we say, how many tiers has she shed of six onions? So remember, we can always find one part of our second ratio from our information, and that is six onions. So we look to where onions are. Onions are on the bottom. So I'm going to put onion on the bottom. 
And then I don't know how many tiers. I'm going to find how many tiers. So I put X tiers. And then you're going to solve for that variable X to find how many tears she would shed if she cut six onions. So I would like you to do this on your own and then bring it to class tomorrow and we will check during our whisk chat. After you have finished this, please complete our summary questions answering all three questions. And then if you have any additional questions, please place them under the questions I still have and bring it to class tomorrow completed.